Hi, kindergarten. So I've been thinking. Coronavirus has never happened before. Our school being closed for this long when it's not summer vacation has never happened before. And it sucks. It really, truly stinks. If I had one wish or one superpower, it would be that I would end coronavirus and we would all be back in our classroom together again, having fun and learning together. That would be my wish or my superpower. But sadly, I don't have wishes or superpowers. All I can do is stay home, wash my hands, try not to share my germs, and I can also try and think of fun things for kindergartners to do in their homes. So I've been thinking about that and I have an idea, but I have to tell you, it's something that's never, that I've never done before in kindergarten. There's a book I have and it is very, very silly and it is full of potty talk and I would never, ever read it in the classroom. But this seems to be a time for things that have never happened before. So I'm going to read it to you. When I read it, it made me laugh a lot. And I felt a little better being stuck at home when I was reading something funny. So I'm hoping that when you hear it, it might make you feel a little better too. So here goes. So. I'm ready. You might notice I'm somewhere different. I haven't read a story here yet. And there's a reason I'm in this room. This is my bathroom. This is my shower curtain. I've had it for a very long time. And the book I'm about to read does have potty words in it. And when we're at school, teachers say, if you need to use potty words, you need to beware. Right, that's why I'm here. So the book I'm going to read is called The Giggler Treatment and it's written by an Irish author. His name is Roddy Doyle and down here J.K. Rowling, who's a very famous author who wrote the Harry Potter books, she says Roddy Doyle is an absolute genius. Maybe you'll agree with that. It's a chapter book. I'm going to read a few chapters at a time. This is chapter one. Mr. Mack was walking to the train station. It was a nice sunny morning. The birds in the trees were singing their favorite songs and the breeze that blew was full of breakfast smells, bacon, eggs, frog's legs, and cabbage. Yum, said Mr. Mack to himself. Mr. Mack was feeling happy. Mr. Mack was feeling very happy. He had a nice lunch in his lunchbox and a surprise in his flask. That's what they call a thermos in Ireland, a flask. And his children's goodbye kisses were still tickling his cheeks. He was going to work and he liked his job. Actually, Mr. Mack loved his job. He was a biscuit tester in a biscuit factory. Now you should know that in Ireland, biscuits are cookies. Here, biscuits are something you eat with your dinner, but in Ireland, they are very much a treat. So his job is to test biscuits in a biscuit factory. It was his job to make sure that the biscuits had the right amount of chocolate, if they were supposed to have chocolate. And he measured them to make sure that they were exactly square, if they were supposed to be square, or exactly round, if they were supposed to be round. Best of all, he tasted them, not all of them. He tasted three in the morning and four in the afternoon to make sure that they tasted exactly right. He was looking forward to work today because he was going to be tasting the fa his favorite biscuits of all time, fig rolls. That's what we call fig newtons in Ireland. We call them fig rolls. The factory made 365 types of biscuits, 
a different biscuit for every day of the year. Mr. Mac liked most of these biscuits and he loved some of them. But fig rolls always came top of his list. He loved their shape. He loved their smell. He loved their intelligence. They were such clever biscuits. They were delicious without needing any help from chocolate. And today was a fig roll testing day. So Mr. Mac was one happy man. But on his way to the station, just after he turned the corner, he saw a seagull sitting on the branch of a tree. You can see it right there. Do you know what, mister? said the seagull. I hate fish. Well, that's surprising. Seagulls that talk and hate fish. I didn't, hold on, wrong, wrong page. <laughs> I didn't know seagulls could perch in trees, said Mr. Mac. He kept walking, but he looked back to have another look at the seagull. And this was a pity, because he didn't see the dog poo in front of him on the footpath. Poor Mr. Mac. His shoe was heading straight for that poo. That's end of chapter one. Chapter two. So what? So what? Yes, so what? People stand on dog poo all the time. Even dogs stand on dog poo now and again. But it was huge. It was a big pile of wet, fresh dog poo. It was probably the biggest pile of poo in the world. Big dog, big poo. So what? I'm bored. That's what it says. I'm bored. I'm going to skip a few pages and see if there's any more about biscuits. That's what it says. I have to read what it says. You know the rule about books. Wait, wait. The story isn't about biscuits and it isn't about poo. The story is about the people who put the poo on the path so that Mr. Mac would stand on it. The people who put it there? It was dog poo. So it came out of a dog, right? Right. So a dog stopped on the path outside the train station. He stayed there for a little while and he left the poo before he ran away, right? Wrong. It was dog poo but it wasn't a dog that put it there. And this story is about the little people who did put it there, just 10 seconds before Mr. Mac turned the corner. And if you look back at the cover of the book, remember the title is The Giggler Treatment? Well, there's a dog. And here are some interesting little creatures. I wonder, do they have anything to do with it? Chapter three, four steps, three steps, two steps. Mr. Mac had seen enough of the seagull. He was going to turn around in plenty of time to see the poo, but the seagull spoke again. Fish, said the seagull, don't talk to me about fish. Four steps, three steps, two steps, one. Mr. Mac's left foot was right over the dog stuff. The bottom of his shoe was exactly 16 and a half inches from the peak of the poo. And Mr. Mac thought he heard giggles. And he was right. He had heard giggles like these. Giggle, giggle, giggle. The poo was in the middle of the path. The path was beside a garden wall. And the gigglers were on the other side of the wall, hidden behind it. There were three of them. They were all standing on the crossbar of a rusty old bike that had been leaning against the wall for more than 20 years. The bike was so old it had almost become part of the wall. The gigglers had watched Mr. Mac as he got nearer to the poo. They had counted the steps. How many? Four. How many now? Three. How many now? Two. They heard the seagull talking to Mr. Mac, and they ducked behind the wall as Mr. Mac walked right up to the poo. How many now? 
one. They waited. Oh, new chapter. It says, a chapter that isn't really a chapter because nothing really happens in it, but we'll call it chapter four. Nothing happens in this chapter. But some of the questions that are probably hopping about in your heads get answered, like this one. Why? Why what? Why did the gigglers put the poo on the path? Good question. Were you wondering that too? They did it because of something Mr. Mack had done the night before he was walking to the train station. But I'll tell you all about it later, because these chapters where nothing happens get boring very quickly. Now, back to the story. Chapter 5, which should probably be called Chapter 4, but let's just call it Chapter 5. Back at the train station, the gigglers waited. They waited for the wallop, Mr. Mac hitting the poo. They waited for the squelch, Mr. Mac stepping down on the poo. They waited for the gasp, Mr. Mac seeing the poo for the first time. They waited for the groan, Mr. Mac seeing that most of the poo was now on his shoe. His shoe was now very, very close to the you-know-what. How close? said the smallest giggler. Fourteen and three-quarter inches, said the biggest giggler. That's very close, said the middle-sized one. And she shoved her fist into her mouth to trap her giggles. And they waited. Chapter 6, which should probably be called Chapter 5, is another of these chapters where nothing much happens except for one very exciting excuse me, thing at the end. More questions, like this one. Who are the gigglers? Good question. The gigglers look after children, and they do it very well. But they do it so quietly that hardly anybody has ever seen them. How do they look after the children? Good question. They follow them everywhere, to school, to the shops, to the park, and back home again. Upstairs, into the toilet, all over the place. Everywhere the children go, the gigglers are always near, always looking after them. What do they look like? Good question. Only a few people have ever seen the gigglers, and they never tell anyone else about them. So it's hard to tell what the gigglers look like. They are baby-sized and furry. Their fur changes color as they move. Like a chameleon? Yes, like a chameleon. If they are near a white wall, they become white. If they are in a tree, they become green and brown. If they are near a car, well, it depends on the color of the car. But they're not very good at being purple, so they try not to go too near purple cars. Why do they follow the children? Another good question. They follow the children to make sure that adults are being fair to them. Parents, teachers, aunties, shopkeepers, all adults. If they are mean to the children, they get the giggle or treatment. If they send a child to bed without their supper, or if they frighten a child, they get the giggle or treatment. If they are dishonest to a child, if say, they give a child fish and say it's chicken. Or if ever they fart and blame the child for it, then they get the giggler treatment. If they are ever rude to a child or make them wear clothes that they hate, they get the giggler treatment. What is the giggler treatment? Maybe you can guess. The giggler treatment is poo on the shoe. What happens then? The adults keep getting the treatment every day, sometimes twice or three times a day, until they stop being mean to the child. Have the gigglers always done this? Oh yes, since the beginning of time. The gigglers have always been there. Since the first dog did its first poo. Since the first caveman grunted at his first cave child, he stomped out of the cave straight onto a huge lump of prehistoric poo. The Roman emperor, that was a leader, Nero, did not like children. 
he ordered his guards to catch all the children and feed them to the lions. Then he stood on a dollop of lion poo. There were more lions than dogs in ancient Rome. Many years later, a saint called Patrick, who I told you about a few weeks ago, was busy driving all the snakes out of Ireland. A little boy called Elvis Og O'Leary, who loved snakes, asked Patrick to stop. But Patrick pushed him out of his way and walked straight on to a little hill of hot poo that only seconds before had been inside an Irish wolfhound called Bran. Irish wolfhounds are a type of dog that's really, really big. St. Patrick got rid of the snakes, but he never got rid of that smell. Two minutes after the Titanic, which was a big ship that sank a long time ago, two minutes after the Titanic hit the iceberg, a woman on deck shouted, Quick, quick, the children will drown. We need to save them. No, said a man. I want more room in the lifeboats. And that man stepped onto a hill of the slimiest green dog poo and slid off the deck of the boat and went straight into the sea. Oh, mammy, he roared, I forgot me water wings. That's what they call arm, the water armbands in Ireland, water wings. So you see, the gigglers have been doing this work for thousands of years. All this time, they've been giving the treatment to men and women who were mean to children. And how was Mr. Mack mean to his children, you might wonder? Good question, and the answer is coming up soon. But now we'll go on to the next chapter. What about the very exciting thing at the end of this chapter? Oh yes, I nearly forgot. While I was telling you all about the gigglers, a woman who was walking in a park in Bombay, that's in India, nearly stood on a snail. That wasn't exciting. Well, the snail thought it was. And that's the end of that chapter. I'm going to take a break now. And the next part of the story will be in another video.